Hello everyone, I'm Tony Lu from Alabama Cloud. Today we're talking about how to use EPPF to track TCP transmissions. As we all know, TCP gives a reliable, orderly, and error checked theory. When there is a packet lost, TCP gets packed through the transmission. When transmission occurs, it may bring a higher latency to applications, especially for latency sensitive, such as Redis. In addition, the transmission may also cause the window smaller and the lower throughput as RPC timeout for even RPC disconnection. In general, the transmission is an important negative indicator used to indicate the quality of TCP because the transmission can be easily obtained and the transmission indicator is negative, passive, and slow pass indicator. However, only focus on transmission is limited to in the real environment. For example, as shown in the picture on the left, we use TP DAG to get the details. We can know the details, but performance overhead is expensive. If it is a counter exported by the proc file system, such as NetState, you will find the transmission are divided into many types, but only the entire native space. The last picture is the transmission of a common monitor system. However, to brief transmission data will introduce a lot of noisy. We also found out that not all transmission we need to be care. The transmission need to be classified at least from the transmission type, process, and connections. For example, uh, for the transmission types, we know that the ITO is the most original and the last method to recover lost packet. However, the TP stack introduced the TRP early trans and fast trans to avoid the transmission for back to ITO. The above avoid an uh, impact on the application. Only RTO transmission will cause the minimal latency of 200 milliseconds. Secondly, different programs may be running on machine, and we usually don't care about the processes, such as SSH. Finally, transmission is more likely to occur in the internet. Sometimes the internet is not sensitive to latency. Of course, overhead is also important. There is also need to provide the easy to integrate the interface for a monitor system. In summary, we decided to use the EPPF to develop our transmission track analysis tools. We first use the BCC, GP Transdop High. Currently, only support the TLP type and its diagnostic meet our needs. At the same time, as the diagnostic tools, BCC do not support for long live environment. We decided to use EPPF to develop called the MPPF. Through key props, we can use the EPPF to collect the transmission event and at the same time, maintain the collection track table. Events are passed to the user space through perforating buff and the BPF map. And the user space is passed through the demand program by Golang to perform a user-defined filter. Then, obtain the transmissions with the format specified by the users. It is passed to other monitor system. At the same time, it is very important that the latest kernel provide the BTF features to support the BPF CUI. However, in our production environment, there are still many kernels that do not support the BTF feature. Therefore, we are based on two solutions to support the BTF. Both are used in our environment. And the next is the example of our MPPF. On the left is the YAML configuration file of MPPF. Each collection will be defined as a job. The filter can be provided in the job field and the aggregation events is also supported. The output result is shown on the right with this format. Next is the MPPF data, which collects through the monitor system, and data is reduced by five times with the RTO data. And the next, the data in the picture above is from the PMesh. At the time shown in the bar figure, there was a problem on the where, and the PMesh tools can detect the problem, and the MPPF can also do that. We can find the problem based on the passive detection mode of TCP RTO with the slower, with the lower overhead and cover the real data traffic paths. Finally, we still have a lot of to do with the transmission, including uh, reduce the overhead with rust refactor. Next, we will compile the filter rules into BPF code and uh, execute it in the kernel. Finally, in the new kernel, we need some new, new handy choice points. At the same time, it's not only limited to transmissions. TCP packed lost latency trace tools we are also developing. Finally, if you are interested in the project, you can follow our SIG 
open source is planning. Thank you all for listening to my topic. Thanks.